Hey, thanks for joining me again this week. I know it, uh, we didn't get a video out last week. We've been super busy. So this is going to be part one of two of the hatch videos. And we're going to release the second one real quick. So to, to kind of make up for last week. Just been really busy. Um, and then after that is going to be the reveal. And once we do the reveal, I have this build going on right here. Yes, I've recorded it all. And that's going to be next. But before we get to that one... We're going to go to the DIY Teardrop Camper Community's fourth annual gathering. So, and I'm going to record all that. We got other YouTubers that are going to be there and over 40 DIY campers. And that's all taking place on the 6th of June. So, that's what I'm going to be doing. And then we'll get right into this build that's behind, well, over there on the side of me. So, without further ado, let's get started. We're going to start the hatch now. And I got my gimbal yesterday, so this will be the last shaky video, I promise. I just haven't had time to unbox it and all that fun stuff. So what I've done here is I've taken a piece of plywood and clamped it to the, to the side of the camper. Key here is to make sure that it spans the entire distance from the top to the bottom of your hatch. Then what I'm going to do, let me set you down here. Is I'm going to take a pencil, I'm going to take a mark the whole length of the hatch. That line nice and dark. So you can see it. Okay. Now we're going to take it over to the bandsaw and give it a cut. What I did there was just cut it close to the line. I'm going to run it through the bandsaw and get a better cut with it. This is going to be the template for all of them. outside now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my adjustable square and I'm going to make another line two and a half inches away from that and cut it and that's one spar set it for two and a half inches now I'm going to take this and go along the line Nice crisp line there, so now we'll be able to, to cut an exact two in two and a half inch hatch rip. What I've done here is I've cut it within the line or within you know a little bit of the line. Now I'm gonna take it through the bandsaw. By cutting it, it just makes it a little more easy. To, to maneuver through the saw, there's a lot less extra weight. have one perfect rib. Now what I'm going to do is duplicate that six times. So there will be six total. I'll put two together on the edge and then two in the center. Now it's time to mark the ends and we'll cut five more. And you're going to take it and clamp it back and as you can see it's a nice perfect perfect fit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the tool the same little tool I made for the spars and do the same thing so we can get the the edge right the 
the line at the top and again at the bottom. So cut those lines, it should fit perfectly on the inside. You have a spar. Now you'll have to make some adjustments at the top for the gap that you need and at the bottom but it fits beautifully. Now I'm just going to duplicate that spar because it fits beautifully on both sides. I'm going to, or that rib I mean. I'm going to duplicate it five times. I'm leaving a little in the center so I can run the bandsaw and make these more manageable. Now if you have a router table, you can make one and then just take it to the router table and uh, duplicate it that way. I have one, it's a DIY. It needs a fence and it needs some work before I feel comfortable using it again. That's it, you just cut them out now. There we have it folks, six identical spars. I have them all clamped together here. I took them to the bench sander, sanded them down. And now what I've done is I'm marking every 12 inches. Because that's where the uh, crossbars will go. Mark them all. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the outside, this one, and that one off. Because they're going to hide the end grain. So those will be the edges this one and this one the edges you'll see the right and will notch what's in the middle to accept the furring strips all right now I took the two out the end ones and now I'm these are my, my lines here I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it with the Sun what I'm doing is taking the cross pieces that I have and marking them while they're all clamped together now I'll take this to the bandsaw and cut it out through all four of the center pieces. So they're all notched exactly the same. So let me show you what I did there, see? So now we'll notch them. That's what you're looking for. Now it's time for assembly. When assemb so when assembled in the hatch, it'll be like that. The two outside pieces will hide the end grain and your whatever you decide to use for your uh, spars will be recessed into all of the center ones. Now there will be a screw through each side and also through each board. Of course, you're gonna to need to pre-drill. So that's how I do it with lots of glue and screws. I usually use pocket screws and recess them, but they hold up pretty well. Okay, so I got my, uh, my spars cut for the hatch, so we'll get them out of the way. That was that measurement I took earlier and I wrote right here on the table. Now we're gonna take and part our 
two end ones together. We're going to glue them and clamp them and let them dry. So this you want is structure, so you want to make sure you use, get a good amount of glue on there. You don't want this slipping around too much. But I don't like a lot of squeeze out either, so. You're laminating pretty much, so as much of this. And I know I'm gonna get a comment or something about the glue. It's tight bond three. These are just the outside, so these are the only four that are going to get glued together. The other two will be in the middle. Apologize, the heat's running in the background. I have to have it running, or I can't glue, because it's it was in the 20s this morning. Springtime in Michigan. Gotta love it. So we'll add a little more where it needs to. Just kind of work it in. Glued the wrong side. Ah, oh, crap. Oh well. Time for a wet rag. That was a mistake, you know, see? Not everybody, even myself, makes mistakes. So I just took a sponge, wet it real good, wiped off a good majority on one side. And I may have to give this a little love with a sander, but at least it's not put together wrong. And I'll show you why it's wrong. That's got a good majority of the glue off. I'm gonna clamp this, you know, it's not getting glue on this side, obviously. So it's no harm, no foul. Okay, got a little glue on me, but that's no big deal. Okay. So, this, let me make sure I get this right. Goes just like this. Because this is the outside for the opposite side. The other one is the outside for this side. Which I better hope, hope I got that right. I did. Got that right. So we can't mess that one up. So what we'll do is we'll do this side. <laughs> Good thing I caught it. That'd have been catastrophic had I put that on. I'd have had to make two more. And the original one I made is this one. So I would have had to make a new original. I guess I could have used one of the others as a template. Okay, and then this is going to go here. There we go. Now we've got one for each side. I can squeeze out here, making sure everything's flush. There we go. Let them dry. Okay, so now it's time for assembly. I have the the ones we glued up already marked, already spaced out against the wall. So now it's time to just assemble it. Because I've got these marked, these are the cross ribs for it. And I already pre-drilled where all the stuff's gonna go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-treat these with a little bit of glue in the center just to get one started. And I'll put them where they need to go. it'll be easier to get the side ones and then you just walk them up one at a time. Okay, so before I finish the sides, I want to go ahead and glue them up a little bit. Could have done this all out and that's where we're going to do the rest. This is just to get the corners situated. I pre-drilled all these so it doesn't split these center ones. Okay, so first one's in. 
So now we're just going to keep doing the same thing. This is the next one. We'll glue, 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 and put it in. Now you can kind of see why I do it this way. You guys should notice some good uh, image sta stability now too. I got a nice gimbal attached to the camera. So this is just obviously dry fit. Why it is the way it is and you'll see over here. Now I'm not going to force these in right now because these are not the right ones. There you go. So that kind of gives you an idea why we do or I do it the way I do it. Now we'll start to add the the bottom and top plate, but we got to put it in inside the the hatch to make sure we get our measurements right. At the top, I've notched for a one by four. It'd be a one by four there. There'll be a one by four there. Stretches all the way across. And then I'll laminate two together so that it's an inch and a half at the top. And at the bottom it'll just be a one by, actually it's a one by three. So it'll be a one by three that runs all the way across. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea. All right, let me show you how I determine the gap that I need. You can see the gap. You take your trim, you set it there. Then you take your galley trim, and I like at least a quarter of an inch, so you can see that's where everything's going to ride, just like that, and there's a nice little gap in between. So that's how I determine the side gaps. Now the top gap and the bottom gap, for the hurricane hinge, it's 3 eighths at the top, and I always do 3 eighths at the bottom too, so that's 3 eighths off the bottom trim not off the floor that adds another eighth inch usually a little bit more alright guys it helps to uh, hit the record button when you're putting in the header and the tailpiece so let me show you what I've done here as you can see here's a header piece it's just a one by three I'm gonna double it up so in between all these will be glued and screwed and uh, at the bottom, I did the same thing. I don't have this camera on the gimbal, so I'm going to go small and slow. Same thing at the bottom. Okay. Those little tail pieces here will be trimmed off because I don't need those. It just helps to set an opening better. So now we're getting ready to put the wood skin on this. So let me back up. I got it on a bench. What I've done, as you can see here, is I've taken a piece of scrap board and I've screwed it into the bench. I did the same thing on the other end. I put one on this side. Okay, This is to help prevent any kind of spring back. Now, it's spring back is going to happen when you let it loose, but if you push down on this hatch, it won't move. So if you put a little weight on it while you're skinning it in the wood, it doesn't move on you. What we're going to do now is we're going to take we're going to utilize some of the scrap wood that we had from all these five foot pieces that we cut off. So we have five, three feet left on a lot of pieces. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab a piece of the same skin that we used on the roof. You can see it here and on the ceiling. We're going to take the factory edge, which is this side. We're going to do the crappy side up and the nice side down so when the hatch is open you see the nice wood grain. So what we're going to do now is we're going to attach this covering half of this, half of the rib here um, so we can attach yet another one on the factory edge and go that way and we'll just use a router to trim it off. Now I do glue it but I don't go crazy. Now we're going to go ahead and throw that on. I'm going to tack it. Same way you do, you, we did the ceiling and the roof. Now I clamp this in place in the galley overnight for the glue to dry for the structure. 
I recommend you do the same thing and just make sure that everything stays where it's supposed to until the glue dries. staples. Got the pressure dialed in pretty good to where it don't blow through. For this, for my personal setup, it's 80 pounds. have it. Step back and look. You can see the factory seam. Nice and tight. It's not going to be an issue under the file line at all. See a nice tight edge on the side. Turned out pretty good. Now let me flip it over and show you that side. Here's the underside. A little bit of sanding to get that stamp off there. I should have paid more attention and flipped that up. But looks pretty good. Get some poly on that and it's going to look beautiful. It'll have the light sides with the darker bottom. So, well, which would actually be the top when it's installed. But uh, it's going to look real nice. Okay, now to dry fit it. Really light. I like the fact that it's light. how well you guys can see that but it's really nice 
got a real nice fits beautifully so next is skin the hatch with, and put the trim and a hinge on hey thanks for hanging out with me stick around for the next video it should be released here momentarily like 24 hours max i would think but we'll do the best we can for video two thanks for hanging out with me and build on